All right, so um, I'll begin with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Again, I thank you for this opportunity we have just to meet and study your creation. And just pray that you guide our steps, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to zoom in on the problem from back here for a second. We are looking at problem 13 to start with. So we're trying to find the magnetic field B is given to be what? It says 0.128 teslas and its direction is the what? Does that say plus C? Okay, I can't read. <laughs> What's the magnetic flux across the surface A, B, C, D? in the figure, <coughs> and what's the magnitude? No, what's the magnetic flux across the surface? Oh, B, BEFC, -E and what's the magnetic flux across the surface? AEFD. All right, and then what's the net flux through all surfaces that includes the shaded volume? Well, the answer to that is zero. I'll tell you the answer to part D at the start. That one's easy, because the magnetic flux through any um, closed surface is zero, as we were talking about today in class, right? There's no magnetic monopoles. Well, maybe, except possibly in textbooks. <laughs> they actually used to have magnetic monopoles in some of the introductory textbooks, I think. At least that's what I keep telling students, so I hope it's true. Um, you know, that'd be embarrassing if I was just imagining it from a dream or something. That would be bad. I try not to lie. Let's see here. Um, so, um, let's see here. So, uh, see if I can recreate the thing over here. What we got? We got. Right. Roughly speaking, something like this, right? And what did it tell me the dimensions were 40 here? This is 40 centimeters. This is 30 centimeters. Is that right? And then the, height is the height is also 30? Yeah, and then the long way is 50. Oh, this? 30, 50, yeah. That way is 50? Well, they didn't need to tell us that. We could have yeah. figured. I guess we do need to know it's a right, like a, you know, right. Okay, and then they got A, B, C on the top. Wait. I really need glasses. A, B, E on the top. I need to make, I need to, I need to wear glasses to this thing next week. A, B, E. And then down we got what? We got uh, D, C, F. All right. So we're trying to find the flux through, and the magnetic field is what? and it's given to be in the positive z direction, right? So I would say z hat, you might say k hat, yeah, if you like that way, that notation. So here's my z, here's my x, here's my y, I hope. Uh, oh man, what'd they do to me? They made, oh, those weirdos, fine. What have, they, what have they done? So y is this way, x is this way? And Z is that way. See, that still makes sense. <clears throat> X crossed in the Y gives you Z. So it's still a right-handed coordinate system. I always check that. That does matter. Some of the formulas we have assume right-handedness. And if that wasn't the case, then, you know, you could be wrong about certain things. So let's see. Let's find the flux through, what was it? Uh, A, B. C, D, where is that? A, B, C, okay, that's this guy, right? So what did you find the answer was to that? What's the flux, if, if I call this thing S, um, we call it S part A. So like, what's the, what's D, S, A equal to, if you want to write it? We usually orient the um, surface outward. So I would do, I would do like, dy, dz, and minus x hat. But notice that b dot this is what?
it's what it's zero right because you've got the like the to draw the picture so the magnetic field looks like this right so it is it is tangent to that face which means the flux is zero so like the answer for part a is zero so for part a the flux the magnetic flux through a b c d is equal to zero then what was the question part What's the magnetic flux across the surface? B E F C. B E F C. B E F C. That's this guy. Right? So I like to think about like the sort of the area element. So what's the, uh, if I call this thing S for part B, the, the uh, infinitesimal area element for SB. I've got a y and an x, so I get like the x dy. The direction is got to be into the board because that's like the the outward pointing normal. If you can imagine, like if I'm inside this solid to orient the surface, I should have an outward pointing normal as the default. So like it would be dz hat minus dz hat actually. So it depends on the wording. Did it say the magnitude? Or did it just say the magnetic flux across the surface? So the yeah, okay, so across the surface. I mean, it's I guess it's a matter of interpretation. I might be tempted to say, well, I. Hmm. So the question that that actually is an ambiguous question because flux is the flux depends on orientation. So if the surface was oriented with the normal pointing that way, I get one answer. If the, if the normal is pointing the other way, I get a different answer. If we orient the normal as I'm saying here, then the flux is negative because the magnetic field goes this way, but the surface is oriented that way. But it's, it's directly perpendicular, right? So like the flux, we can say this much, the magnitude of the magnetic flux through, um, what was it? Whatever, whatever. whatever I, I can't remember the order of the letters he did. B E F C. The. Um, it should just be you know 30 centimeters squared, right? That's this area times the uh, you know 0 0.128 te teslas, and that's probably what the question is looking for. If I was to give this question on a test, I would. I would hope that I remembered to put the word magnitude, asking for the magnitude of the magnetic flux through the surface. That way we can all be happy that the problem is well defined. Um, I get 0 .0, 0 .0, uh, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0
I was wondering if it ever told us what the unit for electric flux was. Gosh, I surely don't remember it. I guess I could read the book. I should probably read my book to finish. Uh, all right, so, um, and then what was the part C? Uh, magnetic flux across A, A, what was it? A, E, F, D, A, E, Oh, AEFD is actually interesting, right? Because um, for AEFD, uh, well, there's, so for AEFD, because of the geometry here, you know that the flux through AEFD, it's the same as the flux through um, SB as it happens because the magnetic field's going like this, right? So the part of it, which is parallel to the surface, doesn't really count. And everything that's going, every line that goes through this surface also goes through that surface, so to speak, right? No, we, we could be more, I, I kind of like to be more mathematical here. Let me show you how. Um, if this is X and this is Y, right? And I'm gonna put D and F into my picture, okay? then that makes this a 30 centimeters there and this is 40 centimeters over here right and here is the bottom line i'll put a tick mark right here to indicate where i am okay that's this line see that see my picture I'm just looking at the, um, I'm just focused on the XY plane. Oh man, thank you. Oh, that's key. Thank you, very good. Very much appreciate that. So XZ plane, yes. The normal to the D, you know, the DE, DFAE surface is what? like. Let me just do a little more color coding. This right here is this line, right? Okay. So like the normal to the surface that we're trying to calculate the flux is, is this one, right? This is the normal vector um, to my A, D, E, F surface. And how do you well, I guess we don't actually have to find the vector, right? We could just do trigonometry now that we have this, yeah? So what's the angle between, like another way to calculate flux is what? It's the, let me write down the formula. So if the, magne if the, if the magnetic field is constant as it is here, well, the flux of the magnetic field, it should be equal to like the, the area vector dotted with the magnetic field, right? If this is, this is only for, for constant B, right? Which is what this problem's about. The area vector here is, well, 50 centimeters by, so the magnitude is 50 centimeters times 30 centimeters, right? And then the, and then we have basically, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that a unit vector just to be honest here, n hat dot, B, and B of course was, you know, um, 0 0.128 Teslas times, times Z hat, right? So we, we get whatever that is, you know, 50, uh, you know, 50 times 30, let me work, I'm sorry, um, Just a second. 0.3 times 0.5 times 0.128, I get 0 0.0192 um, Tesla meters squared, or a Weber if you like, all right. And then we have n hat dot z hat, right? Of course, I, I'm, 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 I'm being too mathematical, my bad, but <laughs> 
this dot product is based on the angle, right? It's the cosine of the angle between um, N and B, right? So if I draw B up there, like this, right? This is B, right? Then the, the whatever angle is here, that's, the, that's what I'm interested in, right? But how would I figure out that angle? Like it's... Can you see it? I don't know. Oh, how are you seeing it? I mean, what, what, what triangle are you seeing there? I mean, I can extend this backwards, right? I mean, I can just as well put that. I, I can, I can, I can put it here, right? Like, you know. And if that angle is theta, this this angle is 90 degrees by construction, right? Um, Oh, I'm sorry, my brain doesn't work at the moment. <laughs> Sad. This is not... This should not be hard. Oh. I should probably draw the B coming from like the top thing. So I can see how it relates to the angles that we know. Like we know the angles for the 30-40 triangle. It, it, I'm sure it's what you just said. I just don't understand why you said what you said. <laughs> I, think, I, think you, I think you already understand the geometry or so just, just me. This is B, right? Um, so I can move that up here. <laughs> how, do I, how do I get that stupid angle? Is it this? Yeah, those are those are alternate interior angles, aren't they? Okay, and then that I, I'm making this way way too complicated. I'm sorry about that. This is so that makes this complementary to excuse me that makes this complementary to theta, which makes this also theta. Which makes, th which makes this 90 minus theta, right? <laughs> I found the most possible complicated way. So I believe that makes this angle over here theta. <laughs> <coughs> Are they all thetas? Am I wrong? Um, which means that theta is inverse tangent of 4 over 3, I think was what you told me about like five minutes ago, right? So... I'm not sure we should have a help session today. I'm feeling like I'm going to be unhelpful. <laughs> Let's try a different problem. This one, this one I'm, um, I've got some kind of, um, I think it's fine. I mean, I think we've done what's right. I really hope this works out the same as what I'm wanting to do. Um, it's clear that that's a positive flux, right? Because the, um, you know, the, 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 the area. So if I draw the picture over here, it's just pain to do. The, like this is the normal vector, right? It's out like that. And so like the magnetic field's also coming in that same direction. Not, it's not literally the same direction. If I could draw a better picture. What is inverse tangent of four divided by three? That's 53.13. I take the cosine of that and I get three fifths. I take three fifths times 0.0192 and I get the same thing. All right, very good. Yay! 0 0.0152. 1152. 1152. 
Tesla meter squared. And that indeed is the answer in the back of the book, which as I explained for sort of obvious, so this is definitely the wrong way to do this problem, what we're doing right now, right? Like we should absolutely do the thing I said at the start, which is just to look at it geometrically and go, okay, since the projection, the shadow of the SA face, not the SA face, the shadow of the AEDF face is SB. That means that the flux, it, the shadow with respect to the, the B vector field, right? Um, in that sense, the shadow of that face is the SB face. I already know the flux through SB, so it's going to be the same as the flux through here. Except, of course, that the back face has the backward pointing normal, which makes the flux negative technically through the, the back face, because like the n hat back here would be pointing like that direction, you know, like backwards. Let me draw another picture, and then I will step away from this problem. But <laughs> no, well, the, yeah. So the, let me let me draw a picture um, like this. Yeah, uh, maybe this picture will help. So here's z, here's x, and I'm suppressing y. All right. So in this picture, the magnetic field lines are like this, right? Here's my magnetic field lines. So the flux just counts the number of field lines that pierce the surface, right? So the point is, any field line that goes through the, like the one that has, you know, so like this is, let's think of this as C, and this is F, and, and this point down here is D, right? Of course, you could also point out that A is also here, and um, B is also here, and this is actually F and E. They're both projecting down to that you know, they're stacked over that point. So, <clears throat> nope, well, well, oh man, what was that? Oh, good. Um, ah. So my, my point <clears throat> is that whatever field line goes through that one goes to that one, All right, So they have to have the same flux. However, to be fussy, same, same magnitude of flux. See, because the normal vector here, the normal vector is taken to point outward. See, so the, this one points that direction, and this one over here points that direction. So you see that the magnetic field lines go in the opposite direction for this one as the normal. That's why that's minus. Whereas this one, well, they're not lined up, but they're in the same general direction, so it's still a positive flux. But it's not simply the product of the magnitude times the area because they don't, they're not parallel. So you have to take the dot product or multiply by the cosine to get the actual flux in that case. Ay, ay, ay. All right, well, anyway, uh, right, let, let, we, we will move on. Is there another one you want to look at? Um, let's see here. Uh, I kind of want to do 14, but I wanted to, I want to have one that I can we can check the um, the answer on. Um, I, I well. Oops. I guess we can try trying to find something that doesn't make us look up a bunch of numbers. <laughs> it's not happening though. Um, <coughs> let's let's try this problem seventeen. We'll try this problem seventeen here. I'll make it bigger. Let me erase. Actually, let me make sure that I actually got this thing in the camera before I erase anything. Goodness gracious. 
All right. So here is the next problem. I'll try to pick up the pace in here. It took us too long to do that last one. So we've got a 150 gram ball, right? Try to draw a picture. So this last problem, it's not too important for the current work, but it will become important in the next chapter on Faraday's law, because in Faraday's law, we're going to look at like change in magnetic flux inducing a voltage. So all of a sudden magnetic flux becomes an important principle and it's good that you've spent time looking at that today. It will make the Faraday's law stuff make a little bit more sense to you when we get to it. Um, all right, so it's dropped into 125 um, uh, meter vertical shaft at the bottom of the staff, the ball enters a magnetic field, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we go, here is our shaft and um, Apparently there's a giant magnet down here. And does it say that the magnetic field goes a particular direction? Um, horizontal east to west, east to west. East to west, east. So I guess that would mean like this way, right? So here's my magnetic fields, right? And we're given that the, it's a 0.25 Tesla field. <laughs> that is huge, by the way. That is a ginormous magnetic field. Um, air resistance is small. Find the magnitude and direction of the force that this magnetic field exerts on the ball just as it enters the field. So we've got a, a charge of 4 times 10 to the eighth electrons. So the, the point of that, the, that wording is a little cagey. Basically, it's saying that the, the excess charge is actually the charge, right? So here you've got a mass of 0 0.15 kilograms, because I don't like grams, with the charge Q. What's the charge Q? The Q is given to be 4 times 10 to the eighth um, electrons. So that's minus 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. It says excess electrons, right? Yeah. Th that means it's negative charge. Excess electrons means negative charge. Um, and we're told that the, um, the shaft here, right before we get to the magnetic field region, is 125 meters down. All right. So the idea is that the ball, the mass, falls to here, right? And then it's got a velocity, right? Um, we'll call it Vf. And then you've got a magnetic field, a 0.25 Tesla. So what happens? Um, you get a force, the Lorentz force, right? So the force is, oh man, I never moved the camera. <laughs> So sorry, people. <laughs> but you know, I guess you get what you pay for. I don't know. Let's see here. I guess they paid a lot for this class, though. I probably shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so which direction is the magnetic force on this? Uh, v cross B, right? So like F is Q, V cross B is the story. And these are perpendicular, right? Because it'd be falling straight down. So we go V um, V crossed into B. I think it would be into the board, right? Am I wrong? V crossed into B. Yeah, into the into the board. I don't know if it even asked us about that, though. We were supposed to uh, find the magnitude, oh, and direction. Um, now I got to think. If that's, 
<laughs> if this is east, right, and this is west, right, and it's going into the board, if I drew the picture like this, right, whole east, west, kind of think about flipping it. Um, I guess I should draw my picture again, right? So the magnetic field's like this, right? And it's going down into the hole, right? So V um, crossed into B. Apparently the force is I think north, right? So northward. The force is northward. So you tell me, what, what do we do next? If we want to find the magnitude, how are we going to figure that out? We don't yet. We have a distance. It's assumed to be on Earth. We've got a mass. Um, I think, the I think the mass is actually irrelevant, which is kind of hilarious. I like that. I like a problem that gives you unnecessary information. Makes it test worthy, you know? Um, sorry, I, I should behave. So, um, to find the velocity, we can just use kinematics, right? So we have uh, Vf squared equals to V naught squared uh, minus 2G change in Y, right? So this gives me VF is equal to the square root of minus 2G change in Y, which is actually the square root of, <coughs> excuse me, 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times 125 meters. which is whatever it is, right? 2 times 125 times 9.8. I get that. I square root that thing. That gives me, oh, that's kind of funny. I got a 49 point, I guess 5, uh, 0 meters per second, right? And then the force, the magnitude is actually QVB, isn't it? Because why, why don't we need to worry about the cross product here? What's the situation between the velocity and the magnetic field? They're, they're perpendicular, right? So the cross product is just the, the magnitude of the cross product is just the product of the magnitude. And then I just got to do the math, I suppose. So we've got uh, 4 times 10 to the 8th times, um, I'm going to drop the minus because we're thinking about magnitude here, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, that's my Q, my V is 49.5, and then my B was 0.25. And since I used Teslas and Coulombs and, and meters per second, this all works out to Newtons, truth be told. <laughs> um, so whatever that is, yeah. Um, I got like 4.95 times 10 to the 9th, and I still need to multiply that by the electric, the electric the charge electron, um, which I think is in the calculator, if I'm smart, constant, 23, I think. Uh, I get 7. Point Nine three times 
times 10 to the minus 10 newtons if I did that right. What'd you get? All right, so we're either both right or both wrong. Both wrong. We're gonna both be right. Are you ready to check it? Or no? 27, what is this, number 27? 17. 17, chapter 27, number 17. And we have 7.93 times 10 to the minus nine, 10 to the minus 10 newtons towards the south. Oh, why were we wrong? What did I neglect? I said, I said north. What was I assuming? I was assuming that Q was positive, right? Because I just did V cross B and I neglected the fact that the charge here is negative. Since the charge is negative, Q V cross V cross B is the opposite direction of V cross B. See, F is not north, V cross B is north, because that's what we actually reasoned through. But Q V cross B is south, because it's the opposite direction, because the, the electron charge is negative, so it, it makes it go southward. All right. Cool. Next, let's see what we got here. Let me, let me skip ahead a bit. Um, let us try for number 29. Number 29. We've got a long wire carrying Four point five amps of current makes two ninety degree. Um, let's see here what we got. Long wire carrying four point five amps of current makes two ninety degrees bends, um, as shown in the figure. The bent part of the wire possesses a uniform point two four Tesla magnetic field. So they like to draw the magnetic fields like this, you see? This grid that's like field lines. Um, I think that means, does it say if it's coming out or in? Okay, so this, mean, this must mean, like our convention, I do circle dots, but they just do dots. So the dots mean coming out at you. All right, that's the, that's the convention. Um, sorry, I'm still rusty on conventions in this course. It's, co it's coming back to me. <laughs> it's coming back to me, slowly but surely, it's coming back. So what's the, what's the physical law we use here? It's the Lorentz force law again, the one we just used. So QV cross B, this is the Lorentz force law for a charge. For a current, that becomes IL cross B. All right, so for IL cross B, what we got here? So we're supposed to calculate the, the bent part of the wire passes through a uniform 0.24 Tesla magnetic field as shown. Find the magnetic, um, find the magnitude and direction of the force that the magnetic field exerts on the wire. All right, so I'm gonna, um, does it tell us? All right, so let me point out something. If you think about this little smidgen right here, right, you got current flowing this way. So the, 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 the the thing we use is the force is equal to um, L I cross B, let's say, all right? Where I, the I vector is in the direction of I. So I've got I going this way, right? And then crossed with B, so the force is downward, right? The story remains the same for the current up here, right? So I might as well just think of this whole thing as one 60 centimeter long current rather than thinking about it as two pieces. So I get the force from the horizontal part of the current 
is equal to L, which is um, you know, 60 centimeters, and then um, the current, which is 4.5, right? Amps times the magnetic field, which was uh, 0.24 Tesla. Man, it's always about these huge magnetic fields, 0.24 Teslas. I was, I was just using my right hand rule to try to figure out the direction, right? So we got I crossed into B downward force, all right? So this is down. So I could put like maybe minus y hat for that, since I don't feel like writing down. And then what's the other part? The other part of the current is this vertical piece right here, right? So the force on the vertical piece, I do I crossed into B, right, to the right. Now that one's just 30 centimeters, and that, there's no other vertical piece inside the, re the, the region. So we just, the, the force on the vertical part is 30 centimeters times the same amp, same, same 4.5 amps, same magnetic field, 0 0.24 teslas, and we just figured out rightward, so x hat, right? So I'm using F equals to Li cross B both times. What's the net force on the, on the wire? It's simply the sum of those two, right? So we just have to add those two forces together and that gives us the force that's on the bent wire going through the region, all right? So we can work that out, right? We're supposed to find the magnitude and direction. So it's a, you know, plain old two-dimensional vector, find the magnitude direction problem. We've worked these a thousand times now, right? So 0 0.6 times 4.5 times 0.24, I get a, um, so we add these together, the net force is what? I get a minus, oh my bad, this is, I did the y part first, so minus 0 0.648 um, newtons, I think. That's the y component, the x component, 0.3 times 4.5 times 0.24, what do we get? Did you get 0.324? And so this gives me the magnitude of the net force. If I, take the, if I t calculate the length of that, I get um, 0 0.7245 newtons. You know, square to the sums of the squares there. And if I draw a picture, where, where, where is the force directed? It's, it's, for, it's directed like this, right? because it's going, it's positive for x, and it's directed downward for the y. So the standard angle, we can simply use the inverse tangent of, you know, minus 0 0.648 divided by 0 0.324. Yeah. Because we're in quadrant, we're in one of the quadrants where the inverse tangent does in fact work, so yay. And I get minus sixty three point four three degrees. What'd you get? Did you get these numbers? Okay, good. Now we're either both right or both wrong. Let's find out. <laughs> if you haven't checked already. Usually you beat me to it. Which problem was this? Number what? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Twenty seven twenty we got it, we got it. We got it. Woohoo! All right, excellent. I wish I could like, um, I wish I could like half raise the, you know, I wish I could like 
have this like stop here and have like all of this to work on. That would be super nice, you know? But that is not how it works. Not without quick clamps, that is. Hmm. Okay, I'll stop thinking about modifying. All right, let me. All right, let's, let me go on here. something hmm rail guns are interesting maybe work that one I don't know Nah. So many words. All right. Let's try our hand at number 59. See if we can make sense of this one. It's got a lot of words. So we'll try to read the words and the pictures out of the... It's, it's up at the top of the page on the next column. So we'll... I'll just try to draw it when we get there. But um, all right, so here's the story. Um, a conducting bar with mass M and length L slides over horizontal rails that are connected to a voltage source. The voltage source maintains a constant current I in the rails and bar. A constant uniform vertical magnetic field B fills the region between the rails. And then we're supposed to find the magnitude and direction of the net force on the conducting bar. Ignore friction, air resistance, and electrical resistance. All right. So we have a conducting bar with mass M length L. All right. So we have, I'll try to draw a picture over here of it. So here's the, the, um, the rails, all right? How do you spell rails? Goodness gracious, I forgot. Oh, I did it right. Yay! All of a sudden I had a moment of like, is that how you spell rails? So the rails are like that. And then a conducting bar. I haven't pictured the, the current source, right? But, and I'm probably not going, I guess I could picture the current source, but it doesn't really help us to picture it that much. Um, So the, the bar slides along the rails, all right? I'll make the bar blue, all right? Here's my bar. And we're told that the conducting bar has a mass M And length what? Length L, right? And we're also told, <coughs> excuse me, that it's connected to a voltage source, and the voltage source maintains a constant current I in the rails in the bar. So I guess I could picture the voltage source. It's like over here, <laughs> if you want to think of it, right? I'm not, anyway, so, you know, this constant voltage, um, well, it's not a constant, <laughs> doesn't really, it'd have to be a variable voltage, truth be told, if it was going to maintain a constant current. See, because the resistance here, if this is just metal, as this bar slides over, the resistance gets bigger because it's like proportional to the length of the metal. So we're ignoring any of that kind of consideration. And let's just, for the sake of it, picture the current going this way, all right? So the current goes there, and then the current comes back here like this as well, right? I don't know if they told me enough information to say otherwise. 
Oh, it's going the other way in the picture? <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> we can do that. There we go. Like that, all right. And then the magnetic field is perpendicular to this bar rail assembly, right? It's going straight up, is it, in the picture? So the magnetic field lines are going up like this. So in this situation, <clears throat> now that we got all this set up, what's the magnetic force on the bar that slides? It's got a current, right? The force is what? Uh, L I cross B, right? So my current is like that. My B is up, so the force. is like that, which will make the bar slide. See how it works? That, that, and because they're perpendicular, it seems like everything's perpendicular. Good grief, so boring. ILB, you know? <laughs> Lib. <clears throat> what are we told? How on earth does this thing have two dots? <clears throat> um, bu -bu -bu -bu. A, find the magnitude and direction of the net force on the conducting bar. Um, I, do we have numbers for any of these things, or is it just that? And this is B, I, and L. Oh, they're down later. later. Are we supposed to use that now? Um, it's lib. <laughs> so if we, what are we supposed to, magnitude and direction of that force, okay. Sometimes they'll, ask, they'll, sometimes they'll like ask you for acceleration. Then you've got to divide by the mass, you know, of that force. They can do that. If the bar has mass m, find the distance d that the bar must move along the rails from rest to attain a speed v. Okay. Um, so, uh, and this is, you know, uh, x hat, let's say, if, if this is x hat. Um, so we can multiply the I'll, I'll, let me work out the numbers here. 0 0.51. My current was what? Um, 2.4 times tens. To, that's a big current. 2,400 amps. That's uh, that's 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 not 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 not, not, not nothing. And oh, 0 0.82 teslas. Man, that's a big one. Um, great. And whatever that is, you know. So you can multiply those, see what you get. Your book has different numbers? Yeah. Oh, weird. Well, that's funny. I get 1,003.68 newtons, and of course that's you know, x hat, which just means, you know, let me, what was this? This is number 59, 2759. It just says ILB to the right. Well, thanks a lot. Well, I had that already. Well, now I'm annoyed. Why did I even bother doing that? ILB was a better answer. Um, the next part of the question was, if the bar has mass m, find the distance d the bar must move along the rails to attain speed v, right? So if it, if, let's suppose that this is like, you know, v naught um, equals to zero. So it starts from rest right there, all right? <clears throat> so suppose it starts from rest. And then the question is, how far does it have to go down, like a distance d down here, right? Is that right? They call it d? Distance d to attain the speed v. So here, right, you've got a speed uh, Vf equals to V, right? How did that happen? Well, that happened uh, because the force was applied, right? So your force is ILB, 
which is of course equal to m times the acceleration. <clears throat> so your acceleration is I, um, ILB over m, right? But we also know that it's a constant acceleration in this situation. So we have, you know, like Vf squared is equal to V naught squared um, plus 2A, well, D, right? Because D is a positive distance in the direction of the acceleration. So this is the kinematic formula in this context. And so, but V naught is given to be zero. And this, this gives me V is the square root of 2AD which is the square root of um, 2ILB over M, I think. And don't lose my D. So I think that would be the formula for V. And I think I just saw it gave a symbolic answer as well. Please give a symbolic answer. Actually, who cares? This is our V squared over V squared M. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's the formula for D. What did it want? That was, I got, I saw the, that's the formula for V. What did it ask for? The distance. Yeah, it asked the distance. So I'm supposed to solve that for D. Solve it for D, what you got? You've got D is equal to V squared over 2A, which is also known as, you know, V squared over 2ILB divided by M, also known as mv squared over 2 ilb. So there's my, I like this problem. You know what, I actually really like this problem. This is a nice problem. Let's stop here so we don't have to do part C. See, <laughs> no. all right, it's been suggested that the rail guns based on this principle could accelerate payloads into earth orbit or beyond. Find the distance the bar must travel along the rails if it's to exceed the escape speed for the Earth, which is 11.2 kilometers per second. Now we let B be those values. All right. Well, good. We've already worked it out. <laughs> right? Um, and for simplicity, you assume the net force on the object is equal to the magnetic... Wait, what? All right, so we're going to neglect gravity, basically, is the point. Fine. Um, Oh, so we're just supposed to plug the stuff we have into D with V equal to... Ah. Fine, I guess. I really don't want to do the numbers, you know? <laughs> I was thinking, how can I write the formula for, for D back in terms of F again, you know? <laughs> D is equal to what? M V squared over 2F, right? I already found F up here, so. <laughs> the mass was what? 30 kilograms. So I do 30 kilograms times 11,200 meters per second squared divided by two times 1,003.68 newtons. And that gives us a distance of what? See, I just, I've already calculated ILB, so I decided to use my number. I feel, this makes me feel better about doing the calculation for part A I didn't need to do. See, because now I'm using it, so it, it makes it okay. And also, I'm confusing some students somewhere, so it's worth it. 211,200 square divided by 2 divided by 1,003.68 yowzas. Well, I got, um, dang, that's, um, um, I, I think I've got 1.87 five times 10 to the uh, 